Today of Shabbos Parsha Shalach, I'm sure you've heard the story about the talking dog that was sent by its master to go fetch something. And as the dog makes its way to the door and has one paw on the handle of the door, it turns back and says, you know, you're always telling me what to do. You never write. You never come and see me. You never pat me. You don't take me for walks anymore. You don't feed me from the table anymore. And the food you do serve me, I wouldn't feed it to a dog. To which his owner said, I said, fetch, not kvetch. Seems that the spies in this week's Torah portion made a similar error of understanding. Hearing Moshe talk about sending the spies, they must have heard the word despise and came back with a negative report about Eretz Yisrael. Really, what did Moshe tell them to do? It's very straightforward. I don't really care what you actually see there said, I want you to look at the land and I want you to see the people that live there and if they're strong I want you to see them as weak and if there are many I want you to see them as few and the land that they're living in even if it looks bad I want you to see it as good and the cities that they dwell in even if they seem fortified see them as easy easy takings And the land itself, even if it doesn't seem fertile, even if it seems poor, I want you to see it as fertile. And I want you to see trees there if there aren't. I want you to see the good in the land. I want you to impose your vision on what you encounter. They were told by Moshe Rabbeinu how to see the land, how to interpret the sensory perceptions. The mission was definitely a hard one. I mean, try asking any Jew, let alone machers, you know, heads of their tribes to withhold their own opinion. But that's what they were asked to do. I don't want to know how you see it. I'm telling you, I want you to see it for me the way I would see it, was what Moshe was saying to them. They tried hard. And they came back. And they started off great. They said it was a land of flowing with milk and honey. But then they made another error. They gave their opinion as to the feasibility of the mission, and nobody had asked them for that. Nobody asked them whether you think we can do this or not. We were just told to take a look at the land and come back with a favorable report. So there's a couple of lessons that I'd like to emphasize from this this scenario. One, the most basic, is that the attitude with which we perceive a situation, the attitude that we have before we see the situation, it informs that situation. And we have a degree of choice in how we view things. You know how they say that a hungry person, everything looks like food? Um, You can have a mindset and you can cultivate a mindset that sees the positive in a situation, that sees the best in a situation. In fact, that's what Rashi explains is actually the the Torah definition of love, is a conscious decision to see the good in the other person. That's that's love. And that's what was required here, to love the land and to come into it and see the good in it. Just like we look at each other, we try and see the good in each other. So we look at the world around us and we look at our state of exile, which is spelled Gola, Gimel, Vav, Lamed, He. And we try and we see the Aleph inside of that, the Aleph that stands for God's presence in the situation, the Aleph that changes the word Gola, meaning exile, to Geula, which means redemption. So that's one of the lessons from the spies. And the other is that um, when we're presented with a situation, not to try and decide ahead of time whether or not we're going to be able to succeed, whether we're going to be able to get a perfect mark on the test that we're about to encounter. That's not what we're asked to do. Remember that phrase, Lo alecha malacha where it's not up to you to finish the job, but you're not free to desist from getting involved in the first place. Hashem, in His wisdom, it presents us with a number of scenarios. Some of them are great stuff. Some of them are severely challenging. Some of them are severely painful. To retreat from them 
to retreat from the encounter is not only self-defeating, it's defeating the whole purpose of existence. Um, so it's important to cultivate an attitude and approach that says, if God's sending this to me, I can handle it. At least I can do what it is that God wants me to do out of that situation. And you know that how we see ourselves, other people see us. Um, but even more than that, how we look at things and how we how we think about things has some massive impact on the reality of what happens in the world around us. Know that you, that we all, are on a mission in this world, a divine mission, empowered by the very divinity who's created the circumstances of our lives. We have kids to raise, mitzvot to fulfill, bills to pay, sparks of holiness to redeem, acts of kindness to extend, acts of patience to extend, in situations and with people that nobody else can get to. We have an end of, to suffering to bring. We have a Mashiach to usher in. And though the task looms large, each act of yours, of mine, of ours, adds to a repository of goodness in the world. One more mitzvah, one more smile, one more bit of patience or restraint. And if things are going a little bit hairy around you, all the more reason to produce those, those moments of goodness. And we will, please God, very soon, see the revealed goodness of this wonderful world that God created. The thought to carry home is tracht good, sign good, think good, be positive, and then do your best to make that positivity a shared reality. Shabbat Shalom.